So welcome, this is Unit 9, Developmental Psychology, Module 53, Sexual Development. And this module aligns with Meyer Psychology for the AP Course 3rd Edition. These are the slides that go um, along with that textbook. So the learning targets for this module about sexual development are to be able to describe how sex hormones influence prenatal and adolescent sexual development and explain intersex conditions discuss the factors that reduce the risk of sexually transmitted infections, and discuss the factors that influence teenagers' sexual behavior and use of contraceptives, and finally synthesize what research has taught us about sexual orientation. So how is biological sex determined? It's determined by the 23rd pair of, chromo 23rd pair of chromosomes. Whether male or female, the mother's contribution to that chromosome pair is an X chromosome. From the father, um, came the one chromosome out of 46 that is not unisex, either another X chromosome making a female or a Y chromosome making a male. So how does testosterone influence prenatal development? About seven weeks after conception, a single gene on the Y chromosome throws a master switch, which triggers the testes to develop and to produce testosterone, the main andro androgen male hormone that produces promotes male sex organ development. So later during the fourth and fifth prenatal months, sex hormones bathe the fetal brain and influence its wiring. Different patterns for males and females develop under the influence of the male's greater testosterone and the female's ovarian hormones. So a flood of hormones triggers another period of dramatic physical changes during adolescence when boys and girls enter puberty. And this two year period of rapid sexual maturation um, differences emerge between males and females. A variety of changes begin at about age 11 in girls and about age 12 in boys, although there are differences, these are on average, um, that different changes occur in males versus females. Height throughout, this is one we can see um, very easily throughout childhood, boys and girls are similar in height. And at puberty, girls usually surge ahead briefly, but then boys typically overtake them at about age 14. Um, other changes that occur during these growth spurts, the primary sex characteristics develop dramatically. So do the non-reproductive secondary sex characteristics, such as, you know, enlarging breasts and hips for, for females and boys' facial hair and voice deepening, um, those kind of things occur um, as individuals are going through puberty. For boys, puberty's landmark um, is called Burmark usually happens at about age 14. Um, for females, the landmark is usually the first menstrual period, usually within a year of about age 12 and a half. Um, genetics do play a major role in predicting when girls experience menarche. Um, but environmental factors seem to also matter too. Um, early menarche is more likely followed, more likely to occur following stressors related to many different things that are listed right there. Intersex is a condition present at birth due to unusual combinations of male and female chromosomes, hormones, and anatomy, and it's possessing biological sexual characteristics of both sexes. For example, a genetic male may be born with normal male hormones and testes, but no penis. Um, such individuals are going to likely end up struggling with gender identity, and there are other challenges. Um, Dramatics is an example. Dramatic improvements in South African track star to the right here. Um, and her times prompted the International Association of Athletics to undertake sex testing in 2009. And it was reported that um, this individual had physical characteristics, not typically male or female, and she was officially cleared to continue competing as a woman. So are adolescents at greater risk for sexually transmitted infections? Um, so compared to the older adults, reports from the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, sexually active adolescents aged 15 to 19 and young adults 20 to 24 are at higher risk. Um, can condoms prevent STIs? They offer only limited protection against certain types of infections, but some others they do not um, reduce the risks. Uh, when people, when used by people with an infected partner, they have been shown to be 80% effective in preventing the transmission of HIV, which is a virus that causes AIDS. 
So what is AIDS? It's a life-threatening sexually transmitted infection um, caused by the HIV virus. It depletes the immune system uh, and leaves the person vulnerable to infections. So although HIV can be tr transmitted by other means, such as needle sharing during drug use, its sexual transmission is most common. Half of all humans with HIV and one fourth of all Americans with HIV are women. Um, how can it be prevented? Having one sexual partner also means partnering with that partner's past partners, any one of whom might have unknowingly transmitted an STI. So hence the first step is to know the status of your partner. What environmental factors contribute to variations in teen sexuality? Uh, communication about birth control options, um, levels of impulsivity, alcohol use, and mass media. So many teenagers are uncomfortable discussing contraception with parents, partners, and peers. Teens who are able to talk freely and openly with their parents and with their partner are more likely to use contraceptives. So if uh, impulsivity can also play a large role, so, it, it, you know, among sexually active teenagers, 72% said they regretted having sex. Alcohol use, those who use alcohol prior to sex seem to be less likely to use condoms. Um, and among late teens and young adults, uh, sexual encounters occur, often occur after alcohol use and sometimes without knowing consent. We can see alcohol use can be very problematic. Per mass media, perceived pure norms influence behavior. The more sexual content adolescents and young adults view or read, the more likely they are to perceive their peers as sexually active, to develop sexually permissive attitudes, and to experience early intercourse. There's also the hypersexualization of female characters. An analysis of the 60 top selling video games found 489 characters, 86% of whom were males. Uh, the female characters were much more likely than the male characters to be hypersexualized, partially nude or revealing um, with revealing clothing or with large breasts and tiny waists. What environmental factors contribute to sexual restraint? High levels of intelligence, religious engagement, presence of a father, and uh, service learning participation seem to contribute to sexual restraint according to the textbook and research. Sexual orientation is our enduring sexual attraction, usually toward members of our own sex um, or other sex. So we've got homosexual versus heterosexual orientation. Um, and then there is variation, less common as well, um, like homosexuality, that is attraction toward both sexes. Today, psychologists view sexual orientation as neither willfully chosen nor willfully changed. Are there environmental factors that seem to influence sexual orientation? In a search for possible environmental influences, Kinsey Institute investigators interviewed uh, a lot of people there. And the bottom line is, if there are environmental fa factors that influence sexual orientation, we don't know quite what they are yet. Um, according to more than a dozen national surveys in Europe and the US, about three or 4% of men and 2% of women are homosexual homosexual. Uh, when the U.S. National Center for Health Statistics asked 34,557 Americans about sexual identity, they found that all but 3.4% answered straight, with 1.46% answering gay or lesbian and 0.7% saying bisexual. So what biological factors influence sexual orientation? Same-sex sexual behaviors have been observed in many different species, including grizzilla, <laughs> grizzlies, gorillas, monkeys, flamingos, and owls. What role might the hypothalamus play in sexual orientation? Well, researcher Simon LeVay studied sections of the hypothalamus taken from deceased heterosexual and homosexual people. Uh, LeVay believes that brain anatomy, specifically the hypothalamus, influences sexual orientation. His hunch seems to be confirmed by the discovery of a similar hypothalamic difference between the male sheep that do, do and don't display same-sex attraction. Are there genetic influences on sexual orientation? Evidence indicates that about a third of the variation in sexual orientation is attributable to genetic influences. That's what they're finding through genetic research. A same-sex orientation does have a tendency to run in families. Identical twins are somewhat more likely than fraternal twins to share 
homosexual orientation. Elevated rates of homosexual orientation and identical and fraternal twins suggest an influence not only of shared genes, but also a shared prenatal environment. German researcher Gunter Dorner pioneered research on the influence of prenatal hormones manipulating a fetal rat's exposure to male hormones, thereby inverting its sexual orientation. And um, this is some research on the older brother effect. Researcher by, research by Ray Blanchard offers these approximate curves depicting a man's likelihood of homosexuality as a function of the number of biologic, biological older brothers. You can see those levels are still very low, but there is a definite trend upward um, depending on the number of older brothers. Okay, learning target reviews. Um, about seven weeks after conception, a gene on the Y chromosome triggers the production of testosterone in males. This promotes male sex organ development. During the fifth and fourth and fifth prenatal months, sex hormones bathe the fetal brain. Prenatal exposure of females to unusually high levels of male hormones can dispose them to have more typical male typical activity interests later on. Another flood of hormones occurs in puberty, triggering a spurt, a growth spurt, the development of primary and secondary sex characteristics in the landmark events of spermark and menarch. Intersex individuals are born with immediate or unusual combinations of male and female chromosomes, hormones, and anatomy. So safer sex practices can help prevent sexually transmitted um, infections. Condoms, while offering limited protection against skin-to-skin -skin STIs, are quite effective in preventing HIV, but not fully effective, the virus that causes AIDS. Knowing one's STI status and sharing it with one's sexual partner is the key to prevention. Sexual behaviors and attitudes vary from culture to culture and era to era. Factors contributing to teen pregnancy include min minimal communication about birth control with parents, partners, and peers, impulsivity, alcohol use, and mass media influence. High intelligence, religious engagement, father presence and participation in service learning programs have been predictors of teen sexual restraint. Sexual orientation is an enduring sexual attraction, usually toward members of one's own sex or the other sex or variations toward both sexes. These are called homosexual, heterosexual, and bisexual orientation. Today's psychologists view sexual orientation as neither willfully chosen nor willfully changed. And finally, there's no evidence that we know of that environmental influences determine sexual orientation. We haven't uncovered that yet. Um, evidence for biological influences include the presence of same-sex attraction in many animal species, straight gay differences in body and brain characteristics, higher rates of homosexuality in certain families and in identical twins, uh, the effect of exposure to certain hormones during critical periods of prenatal development, and the fraternal birth order effect. Okay. Thank you for listening. Take care.